still has doubt in your mind. Today we came to let you know that you're not done living yet. There's still things that you have to do with your life. You still have jobs to do. You still have buildings to build. You still have songs to write. You still have visions to pioneer. God is not through with somebody in this building yet. God still has great things that he wants to do in and through your life. Don't let the devil steal the things that God has put inside of you. Don't let the devil make you up on the dreams that God has put inside of you. Let me tell somebody by your side. Tell them, say, neighbor, manifest, manifest, manifest your gifts, manifest your potentials, manifest your goals, manifest your creativity, manifest the ideas that God has put inside of you. Somebody, anybody, give Jesus a worthy shout of praise. Hallelujah. Special moments from last Sunday. When the curtains close on an act, they turn off the light. And some of you are in the place where the lights are turned off. The lights are turned off because they need to rearrange the set. You lost your job and you're crying. Hold on, hold on. God is just rearranging the set. David, realize my time is not yet come. You must know when it's your turn. You must know when it's your time. And until it is your turn, you stay in line. All these line jumpers become disasters. If in order to get into an office, you reduce the office... Don't think that when you get there, what you remove, people will add to you. You know, the, the, the one that I really like was a gentleman sent to me a post, and, and that really blessed me. He said, no, I pray for them. Every girl that doesn't know how to cook, may they marry. Everyone that does not know how to bath, may they marry. <laughs> Everyone that doesn't know how to keep a home, may they marry. Father, please send them their husband, may they be married, but just not to me. For the four of the service, please be on your feet and receive our senior pastor, Pastor Larry Obusha. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lift your hands wherever you are and let us magnify him. Somebody worship him this morning.
for he alone is worthy. to exalt you. You alone deserve the praise. You alone deserve our worship. For who could have done the things that you have done in our lives? Who could have brought us from where you are bringing us from to where we are today? We'll give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. Thank you. Thank you for the many battles you won on our behalf. Thank you for the many mouths you shot on our behalf. Thank you for the arrows shot in our direction that you broke on our behalf. We'll give you the praise. And we give you the glory. You are God. You are God. And you are good. Everything you do is good. That is our testimony this morning. Everyone who loves Jesus, focus on him. Forget about who came to church with you, what you left at home, or what you may be going home to go and meet. And focus on him. And tell him, touch me. You know where I am, touch me. As our faces are different, our needs are different. Someone here needs a, a, a healing. Another needs a financial breakthrough. Someone else just wants direction. But we all need a touch from him. Father, we didn't come to play. I didn't come for a religious exercise this morning. Touch me. me you know where the shoe pinches you know what I discussed with you last night you know what I cried about this morning Jesus touched me I need a touch from you Jesus touch from you and I'll be okay Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, let nobody, man, woman, boy, or girl, do not let them leave this room the same way they came. I'm asking, Work in their lives and bring glory to your name. Wipe away someone's tears this morning. Strengthen someone's feeble knee. Energize someone else's heart. Father, give courage to the faint. Direction to the confused. Healing to the sick deliverance to the oppressed do it because you are God and we will testify 
it is to you we have come we have not come to scratch a religious itch this morning we have come to Mount Zion let no man leave this room empty feel us till we want no more Spirit of the living God Holy Spirit move in this room do the bidding of God the Father establish the counsel of God the Son which is the word that the sons of men may have a reason to rejoice we give you praise our Father in Jesus matchless name and everybody says amen if you love Jesus if you love Jesus I'm not talking to pretenders if you really love Jesus lift your hands above your shoulders throw back your head and open wide your mouth and put your hands together and give him a shout of praise hallelujah nobody can do the things that he does nobody can do the things that he does hallelujah if you came to church this morning with a bible quickly grab your bibles second timothy Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two verse nineteen. Timothy two nineteen. Are you there? Are you sure you're there or it's just on the screen? Ask the person standing next to you, if a person does not have a Bible, ask them, what is the matter with you? <laughs> what if the screens don't work? Hallelujah. One verse of scripture, I'm going to ask that we read the word of God together after the count of three. One, two, three, go. Let me read again in your hearing. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us bow our heads as we go before him in a short word of prayer. Our Father, we come to you hum humbly. We ask in the name of Jesus that he will speak to us the way you alone can. I ask, O oh God, let every fallow ground be broken. Let our hearts be prepared and ready to receive the incorruptible seed of your word. Let our time spent admonishing each other not be time wasted this morning. Father, cause deliverance to come, cause encouragement to come, cause us to be challenged by the reason of your spoken word. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody says amen. You may please be seated in God's beautiful presence. I'm sure from our text it is easy to come to the conclusion that my exhortation this morning is more of an admonition. Uh, the Bible says that iron sharpens iron, a man the countenance of his friend. So today we have just come to sharpen each other. To remind ourselves of the fact that um, we cannot afford to let go of the truths that will lend in light just because there is darkness all around. So for a subject title this morning, I am just simply going to title this exhortation, Black is Still Black. Help me turn to your neighbor, look at them straight in the face, and tell them for me, Black is Still Black. Oh, that neighbor did not hear you. Please turn to your other neighbor, make sure you have their full attention, and tell them that Black is Still Black. Black is still black. 
To say that we live in perilous times will not be news. It is something that we are all very well accustomed to, that we live in an age where things are shifting. Allegiances are shifting. Associations are changing. Alliances are constantly changing. And if there is any time for an anchor, this is that time. I don't know about you, but when I consider the things going on in the world around us, I come to no other conclusion that you need to find some kind of solid ground. Because everything seems to be shifting, everything seems to be changing, everything seems to be moving. I don't know about you. I need an anchor. I need something that will not shift. I need something that will not shake. I need something that is not going to move. All over the world, nations that used to be friendly with other nations are no longer friendly. Nations that used to be allies have now become sworn enemies. In your life also, the people that once used to have your back no longer have your back. The people that you two will really, realistically, without any any thought for yourself, take a bullet for. Today, you really couldn't care less if they got their bullet by themselves. Why? Because things are shifting. Things are changing. I need some solidity in my life. I want something that is reliable. Something that no matter what happens, every time I get there, I get the same result. Are you still here? What is betrayal? Betrayal is many things, but one of the things betrayal is, is that you promised me something today. I came to you the first time, you gave it to me. I'm coming the second time, and you cannot give it to me, so I feel betrayed by your actions. Are you still here, my friends? I'm saying all of that to say this. The times of adversity are times of great opportunities. We have said that and said it and said it and said it. That by now everybody ought to know. In fact, the truth is that at times God uses adversity to hide opportunities. And if you allow the adversity to scare you, you won't have access to the opportunity. But also, I must say this, if I am going to be truthful to you. That times of adversity are also times of compromise. Yes! It is a time of opportunity, but it is also a time of compromise. There is no time like when things are difficult that when people begin to let go of the things they once held dear. Oh, I'm going somewhere today. Help me tap your neighbor one more time and tell that neighbor for me, black is still black. Hmm. When there is adversity, when there is economic downturn, then the propensity to do wrong increases. The predilection to do the things that we once said we will not do, then it suddenly increases. Hear me, my friends. The fact that you have an excuse to justify a wrong thing does not make it right. Oh, can can, can we go there? Because black has not changed. Black is still black. Wrong is wrong. Right is right. What is good is good. What is bad is bad. Unfortunately, we live in a world that is becoming anti-absolutes. The world can no longer abhor um, absolutes. They can't stand absolutes because absolutes show them up for who they really are. My friends, listen to me. I am living in a generation where I've come to realize that people don't want things to be black anymore. They don't want things to be white anymore everybody wants to live in the gray zone you know what gray is gray is too dark to be white and too white to be black so it's neither here nor there that's why people have little patience now for you if you if you stand by an absolute 
You almost become a pariah kind of person. Nobody wants to have anything to do with you because they think that you are, you are holier than thou. Standards are shifting. Everything is changing. And more than ever before, because the, the times we're living are difficult, now people have a reason to justify wrong. Mm. I will go, I will come there. Tap your other neighbor, tell that person black is still black. See, if you don't leave this room with anything and you leave with black is still black, my job would have been done. Because then it will settle into your subconscious every time you have to make a choice that what is wrong is wrong and what is right is right. And wrong does not automatically become black because you have an excuse for it. Are you still here? You know, it's how we justify lying. See, but they put a, a, a gun to his head. Now, what was the man supposed to do? But it's still a lie. Are you still here? Tell your other neighbor, black is still black. Oh, it's going to get good. No, they didn't hear you, so tell them again, black is still black. You see, I told the first service, I, I was speaking to a few people, and someone asked me, you know, why do people cheat? Why do husbands cheat on wives, and wives cheat on husbands, and all kinds of things are going crazy, and, you know, everything is just upside down in the world that we're living in, and I tell them, you know, they were, they were, they were thinking I was going to tell them, you know, you know, wives too now, they should try, they should not be so fat, that way their husband will not cheat, they should give them peace, so that their husband will not cheat, husband too, now you two try, now give her money, so that she's not cheated, you, the truth is, people cheat because they can Everyone who cheats has had a choice to make. The fact that your wife is troublesome is not an excuse for adultery. Black is still black. Oh, pastor, when I married her, she was a size 11. Okay, size 10. If she was a UK 10. Now she's an American 18. What am I supposed to do with that? Hear me in the house of God. There are people whose wives went from a size 8 to an American 22 and they still did not cheat because people cheat because they can. Black is still black. Because I have realized in the day and age that we live in, most people can find a reason to justify wrong. They perpetually do wrong thinking that because there's a reason for it, it makes it right. I came to tell you in the house of God this Sunday morning, it is not a popular black is still black I know it's the kind of message you don't come to church on Sunday to hear pastor have you finished the series on David <laughs> go back there that is very encouraging tell us the throne is waiting the reason why you get to the throne and you become an embarrassment to the body of Christ is because nobody taught you that black is still black white is still white anybody with half a Are you still here? Whenever you lose sight of absolutes, you lose your moral compass. Because once you lose sight of absolutes, it means right is not really right, and wrong is not really wrong. Oh, until thou da, oh bakola ware, oh julo fintini, oh bani jela ujore. Okay, okay. It sounds like tongues to many of you. The song simply says that what is not good is not good. Snatching your friend's husband is a shameful thing. It spoils your name in the community of friends. Are you still here, my friends? We live in this time and in this age 
where the lines between what is right and wrong have become so blurred that they have practically disappeared and people live by no moral compass anymore. People now have fancy names to cover and describe sin because if you can, if you can, if you can, if you can, if you can taint it a bit, cover it up a bit, then, then the pang of it, the full import of it does not really lie on your conscience. But I came to tell you in the house of God this Sunday morning that the foundation of God standeth sure having this seal let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity in other words God is not going to change his standards just because you got saved God is not going to change his rules just because you are in the kingdom his standards are his standards you see when you come to God it's like coming into an institution you are not the one who will determine for the institution what GPA is first class the institution already determined before you show up what is No wisdom for me. That business that put brothers together, I just I use wisdom for him. It was wisdom. No, it's not wisdom. It's called cheating. It's called stealing. Black is still black. Young girl, listen to me. I know things are hard and things are tough, but please stay in school. Because the fact that your parents can't pay, give you school fees, is not an excuse for you to become a high-class prostitute. Hear me in the house of God. Black is still black. Am I talking to unbelievers? No. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to people that are blood bought, blood washed, lift up holy hands and serve in church. Black is still black. We seem to have forgotten because everybody now says, you know what? We have grace to repent. God understands that you know there was no money and a girl has got to do what a girl has got to do. The devil is a liar. Black is still leave people's husbands alone people's husbands leave small small girls alone too black is still black the fact that you want to help her with school fees does not give you license to her body what kind of uncle are you it's a good place to clap A good place to clap. Oh, tap your other neighbor. Tell them for me that black is still black. Oh, I wish I had a real preacher in my house of God. Say like an American preacher. Black is still black. <laughs> the devil is a liar. The foundation of God stand at true. I know you came to church this Sunday morning to hear a God will bless you message. This is a God will bless you message. Because if you get this right, then God can really bless you. Black is still black. You know, we, we, eh, Pastor, Pastor, you don't understand. Pastor, you don't, if you see the, my husband is stingy like this, stingy. I never see people stingy like this. He, he say, no, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through these six years of this marriage. Pastor, you have been. Oh, hear me in the house of God. There are people whose husbands are not giving them nothing, and they are still faithful. Everyone who cheats, cheats because they can. Stop going around confusing people. Pastor, you don't understand. You see that, my wife, eh? nobody can live without if we yourself. You know, if you marry my wife, of course I can't. You know, if you marry my wife, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I can't be She doesn't give you peace. That's why I like it. Pastor, that's the reason why I am always in Uniport. Shame! You know what? Thank you. 
black is black. I just came to admonish you this morning, really. No excuse is tenable for sin. Ah, pastor, they never pay us. So. In fact, six months, six months, no salary. Pastor, can you imagine how is the man supposed to feed the family? Uh, so when the vendors come, now you have to arrange yourself. Man of God, I will bring the tight. Let me tell you the truth. You can bring the tight. It doesn't clean up the money. We will spend the money for the fortunes of the kingdom. But it will still be wrong. Are you still here? Black is still black. You see, times of adversity present times of great opportunities. But they also present times of great compromise. There are people who never would have lied, cheated, conspired, or schemed to do something wrong. But just because the times are hard, now they are wondering, maybe, Sha, is it bad really? My brother, what do you think? After all, nobody will know. It's just to add an extra zero and cover it up in the archives so that when they try to balance the paper, everything go balance. Is that a wrong thing? Because I'm feeling, oh yes, it is wrong. Why? Black is still. Having a reason for it does not suddenly change black to white. Are you still here? You know, it's interesting how we come up with all these nice names for wrong things. You know that adultery is no longer adultery. It's a had a fling. <laughs> you know, it was just, just no, Pastor lived that in. It was just one girl like that. Now, just they were kind of her. It was just a small fling. Seriously. You are an adulterer! With capital A at the beginning. You know, I was like, Pastor, I don't understand. Yes, I know, I know, I know I have an issue. It's, a, it's an issue that I'm struggling with with my sexuality. You are a fornicator. <laughs> an issue is a mistake. Your persistent camping somebody that is not your wife and having free sex is wrong. That's not an issue, that's fornicating. You know, you know, no, Pastor, I have this issue I've been struggling with. It's just, you know, it's a small thing. In fact, my, my Christian life is really growing, you know, it's really growing. But it's just that small. I don't know, but these church girls too, they should worry what they are wearing. They should stop worrying what they are wearing. Man of God, man of God. We are, we are men of God, but we're in the flesh. It must mean you don't read your Bible. He that is born of God overcomes the world. That is what the Bible says. Are you still here? You no, know, I'm ah, Pastor, you don't have to talk to this girl. So the things that they are wearing in this church, uh, um, man of God, <laughs> Pastor, it's because you're always in front. Oh. It's because you're always. If you come inside the middle, the middle. <laughs> mm, that's why I'm going in the middle, man. Huh? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I like to say this. I, I said to people, you see. Now, Percy will not get a problem, eh? Now they see cleavage. <laughs> mm. No, no, tr- truly. There is a level of problem you have. <laughs> Someone walks naked and says, I better carry your wallet, Pastor. <laughs> so the truth is, if you are the one who's always seeing everybody with cleavage, You know, a church is an interesting place. You know why? Because whatever you seek, you will find. In church. If you come seeking right, you will see right. If you come seeking wrong, you will see wrong. You know why? We don't see things or people the way they are. We see them the way we are. So you are only going to see yourself in other people. So if you go around noting cleavages, you have a cleavage problem. Period. It's a good place to clap. (laughs) Why am I saying all of these things? Black should remain black. Someone said, Pastor, black and white is boring. That's why we have 50 shades of gray. Seriously. 
Every time we lose our sense of absolutes, we lose our moral compass. That's the reason why you go to many churches now and everything goes. Why? Because we have lost our sense of absolutes. What is bad is no longer totally bad. And what is good is not totally good. So everybody now is neither good nor bad. We are all gray. No, we are not. The foundation of God stands sure. It's not shifting like friendships, alliances, associations, or allegiances. It stands sure. Having this seal, let everyone who names the name of the Lord. My brother, it is not cool to sing in the choir and be shacking up with women. It's not. It's not okay to stand in front of the church as usher. And then you are very popular in the club. It's not right. It's not. You give all of us a bad name. It's not. Are you still here? So, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor, let me tell you, you know, you're already, I saw a church member inside the club. I asked, what, what did you go find? <laughs> you went there for evangelism. <laughs> what were you doing there? Why am I talking to you like this? Because I need you to understand. Yes, there are opportunities in adversity, but there also is compromise. There are many people who are doing stuff right now they never thought they'll be doing. Some of you are messing around right now just because as far as you're concerned, that's the way to make ends meet. Black. It's still black. Times are hard does not justify wrong. In fact, the true test of your character, really, is how much you can stand for what is right when you have every reason to do wrong. You see, that's why I tell young men or young ladies, <laughs> the guy that does not have... <clears throat> The character not to sleep with you whilst you are dating will not suddenly process the character to stay faithful to you when you are married. You know why? It has no training for it. You see, the character to say, you know what? We are dating, we are courting, or we are going out, whichever one they do these days. And say, you know what? We are going to keep ourselves pure. Marriage is honorable, no? The bed undefiled, we're going to keep ourselves pure. If you can find that kind of moral character not to touch you, then you'll probably have a dependable man who is not going to leave you and go messing around with every Jane, Cynthia, and Samantha that he comes across in the marriage. But if he's already sleeping with you, are you really, really? And then you say, oh, my Jimmy, my Jimmy. There is no Ekuro that is back in any ewa anywhere. <laughs> oh, 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 I'll, I'll leave you guys alone. Yeah. <laughs> Tap your neighbor by the shoulder, tell them that black is black. And white is white. Why is this important that you have this at the back of your mind? Because already the world, the world is anti our God. The world is trying to do everything to push our Christian values out of mainstream of society. The world is committed to ensuring that we live in a world that is totally anti God. Are you still here? A few years ago, I preached a message in this house, and I and I and I. And I mentioned to you there is a 10 um, 10 strategic points put together by people who are trying to create a new world order to ensure that Christianity does not survive in the society and part of the things that they did was they articulated a 10 point agenda of a plan in which if any society follows those plans the truth my friends is they will drive Christian values from that community and from that society are you still here? And one of the first, number one is take prayer out of schools. That's why in America today, 
They don't pray. And most of Europe today, they've taken prayer out of schools. Are you still here? Some of you are thinking, oh, that is all the way in America. You know, reach us for this side. Can I please tell you the truth? We have our own version of it. Our own version is not take prayer out of school. It's put confusion in the minds of the children. Because when you change the curriculum to put CRK and IRK and social studies together as one subject, what you're simply saying is you're creating parallels. We are saying that, you see, not one way leads to God or leads to heaven or leads to eternal life. All these religions are the same and they're parallel together. That is exactly the same thing as taking prayer out of schools. Are you still here? My friend, we live in a difficult world. Oh dear. When you take prayer out of school, you are trying to cause the children to form unconsciously an idea that they can live their life without God. That's simply what you're saying. So by the time they are full adults, they don't have any reason to think God is an important part of their existence. Number two, part of the plan to ensure whew, that Christian values are totally eroded. That's already a reality today. Remove parental authority. So now we have folk who don't have children telling you how to raise your own children. They bring someone whose child is on crack cocaine, on meth, and on all kinds of hard drugs, and he comes on TV and he's the one telling you not to smack your child. I don't know about you. I'm grateful for smacking. I'm thankful that someone smacked the living daylight out of me. Why? Because you see, the rod is the reset button. How many of you were resetted by a rod? Lift your hand and give God a shout of praise. See, that rod cured me. And I know I'm not alone in this room. You will not have been the person you have become or doing the things you are doing right now if not that someone used the rod to press preset. Reset. You see, when, oh. there's something, you know, you know, when I was, oh God, God help me. You know, they, they took me from, can I, okay, I'll tell you. I went to different schools, different schools. First, I went to Ekimogun Primary School. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> then from there, they took me to Tender Age Nursery and Primary School in Patient Street in Ebutemeta. Then from there, I think primary three or thereabout, um, I went to Navy Primary School. And I remember clearly, when I got to primary five, I started mixing with all these children of military officers and all of that and all of that, you know, and you know. And you know the interesting thing? These people are coming from homes where the F word is freely used. So it became a thing in school, in class. Hey, F you, you, F that. They'll give you the finger. And blah, blah, blah. So one day I got home. <laughs> and my mother was trying to tell me something. So I got angry and started and said, F you. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. The response was instant. Reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twa, 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 twa. I didn't mean it to. Is that what I said? Mommy, I didn't say so. What was I thinking? (laughs) Oh, God bless my mother. Mm. Are you still here, my friend? But we live in a world today where we are not even allowed to train our own children adequately. And so what we are, what we are creating is a generation who at 9 and 10 can look you, their mother or their father in the face and tell you, you know what, Dad? I want to be an atheist. I don't want to go to church no more. I don't even believe in God. I mean, if God is around, why is everything so upside down? He must really be doing a bad job of taking the world, you know, at nine or ten. And you don't have the instrument of reset. When you would have taken him or her inside a room, 
I'll reset him. Are you still here? That's the reason why for the rest of us we must understand that black is black and white is white. Because the more we move away from those absolutes, the more we bring ourselves into, into, into a place of, of ambiguity where we are easily discredited and denigrated and degraded and our impact is continually reduced. You see my biggest fear? My biggest fear is that in the next 20 years, Christianity may not be as relevant as it is today. You know why? Because even in church, we are joining them in the gray zone. What has kept Christianity going is the ability to say black is black and white is white. That now becomes the standard against which we are judged. The minute you move into the gray zone, there's no standard to judge you by. Are you still here? Oh. Part of this, 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 this agenda to, to, to ensure... That, that, that Christian values are totally eroded is also the fact that they have tried to destroy the Christian family structure. So now, the definition of marriage is no longer between a man and a woman. It is now between a man and a woman, A. A man and a man, B. A woman and a woman, C. A man and an animal, D. So the next thing, in fact, I read, I read, I read, I read, I, read, I think about a year ago, some group came up and they, they, they said they are necromongers. Um, these are people who have an affinity for dead things, deaf, dead people, deaf, and, and they are saying that they want to be able to marry the dead. I don't, you see this? Ah, ah, are you still here? How are they destroying traditional family structure? One, they are promoting sexual promiscuity. They are telling young people that the concept of premarital sex is okay. Everything you see on TV suggests that to you. You know, growing up, I used to think it was only a, a, an American problem, a British problem, an European problem. But can I please tell it's also a very, very Nigerian problem today. Ah, oh, God help me. I was shocked to my bones when I was told that up to 65%, if not 75%, of the young people on all our campuses are engaging in premarital sex. You see, that did not worry me too much. Uh, I mean, that, that bothered me because I started thinking in my mind, we live in a different day. In my day when you're on campus, basically you're between 19 and 25. But today you have them graduating at 20. And 21. So you begin to ask yourself, who are these people having all this sex? 15 year olds, 16 year olds, 17 year olds. It is a problem. Because everywhere you turn, if it is not erotic, it does not sell. Whether it's an advert, it's an, I told the first service, who are the people that made twerking and all of this crazy stuff? Who, who are the people who made, them, who made them into what they are, made them into a fad? Most of the people who work in the media houses. So we now stay and shake and shake and shake and take the picture and then the people, you are saying it on radio. Oh, he's got a good twerk. Oh, she's got a bad twerk. And then they begin to post that. And, and that is how those things subconsciously begin to look like it is right to young people. You know, I, I give them an example in the first service. You want to sell printer, HP SP110, and then there's a girl in bikini with her hand on the printer on the table. And the question is, I don't understand. What is the girl? It is not a seaside resort. It is not an advert for bikini. It is not an advert for you. It's printer. Printer. HP printer. <laughs> anyway, then Pastor Uche explained it to me in the first service. 
So he said, no, I don't get it. I said, okay, sure. So he now told me. I was preaching and he was telling me. He said, you buy the printer, you get the girl free. <laughs> you see, that's it. You see, that's it. <laughs> So, I'm saying this, you know your pastor. You people think I'm the bad business. Are you still here, my friends? They say that if sex is free, then you must legalize abortion. And now in many areas all over the world, abortion is free. In fact, in many places, abortion is state paid for. So you just walk in there and you tell them you want to have an abortion. You don't have to have a dime. The doctor will perform the abortion and you go scot-free and the state picks up the bill. Because if sex is going to be free, you must remove the consequence. Are you still here? So today, I tell, you see, young people, you see, there are many young people in this room and if they're going to be truthful to you, they will tell you if, remove, if you remove the issue of sexuality and, and sex and all of those things away from their life. They will all be better Christians. All of them. Right or wrong? Right. I know I'm right. Are you still here? What is the main essence of all of these things? To erode our Christian values. So there must be a, a remnant. There must be a set of people who are taking a stand and saying, you know what? The foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, let them that name the name of the Lord, we will depart from iniquity. Black is still black. Sex outside of marriage is wrong. Are you still here? Oh, someone said, okay, but I'm not having sex now. I'm just helping myself. That one too. Self-help <laughs> is wrong. It's a good place to clap. <laughs> there are many things. Make homosexuality an alternate lifestyle. Debase art. Make it run mad. You know, I was telling them in the first service, I said, you know, at the rate we are going with art and fashion and those things, very soon people walk around stark naked with only their clothes painted on. And it will be art. So I'm just going to be walking around and seeing someone that's just not wearing a shred of fabric. But they have painted here, painted, they paint the cloth on him. It's art meets fashion. Because, because even now, to watch a music video is a problem. It's nothing short of soft porn. Whenever you watch anything where you see 80% of flesh showing is porn. Oh, sorry, you don't know what porn is. Pornography. You know, someone says, you know, pastor, you know, but it's soft. I say, eh? Is there hard? I say, ah, pastor, there's hardcore. Nah. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, that is the world we live today. Everything around you is constantly trying to erode what is right. Now we live in a time where to be right feels wrong. Oh, can I, can I, can I, can I really talk to you? To be right now feels wrong. Even in church, you are the one doing the right thing. And everybody is looking at you like you are the one doing the wrong thing. You are the one saying, no, we cannot defraud the company. Everybody's like, you the Chris? Now your papa company? How much we your own share inside self? And then they gang up against you. And it's interesting to find out that many of them are members of the same church. So one person is trying to do what is right and all the others who are listening to exactly the same word in the same atmosphere are saying, even Pastor Larry Seth, even Pastor, you know, go refuse this kind of thing. You know, is it not crazy how people come up with all these things? You know, have you heard everybody is doing it? And the question you have to ask yourself is, who is everybody? I found nothing is as, 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 as vague as some of, those, some of those assertions that people make. You know, everybody's saying, you know, all the people are saying. And then you ask yourself, who are the people that are saying? 
and you find out that maybe two or three or five um, beds of the same feathers that flock together kind of people. Besides, if everybody is doing it, if it is wrong, black is still black. Hey, but everybody, everybody, are, everybody is sorting the lecturer, everybody is sorting. Let me tell you. We live, we live in the day where now Christians will counsel you to go and sort the lecturer. Collect your pass mark and go. Other than to suffer an extra year. Believers, pastors who say it is wisdom. Hear me. Black is still black. I would rather you suffer and stay. Not because, of, because that is when God can then truly vindicate you. Are you still here? But we live in a generation where everybody's in a hurry to go. But you know what I've realized? The fact that you sorted the lecturer, did something wrong, got out of school, does not mean you're going to get a better life. There's somebody who was defrauded, who went through the extra year, suffered. Now where you stand, he's going to meet you, overtake you. You know why? Because God is a just God. God is a just God. He says he will not allow the word of the wicked to rest on the Lord. The black is still black. Black is black. The standards of God is not going to change. You are in the same church and you are keeping malice with your gang of friends. You know, in church, you have plenty of gangs. They are not cliques, so they are gangs. So the members of the gang are gangsters. Are you still here? No. Say what? Shadi? Who be Shadi? How now? When she joined this church? For what now? Not her type. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. Blankam, blankam. <laughs> blankam. My sister, as your pastor, black is still black. It is wrong. I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not trying to say it in a way that you won't feel bad. Feel bad. It is necessary for repentance. It's called godly sorrow. Black is still black. We keep malice. We compete. We are envious. We are jealous. You are never happy when something good happens to anybody. Everything must be happening to you. If it happens to somebody else, it's a taboo. Black is still black. It is wrong. What is your motivation for struggling? Let me tell you. When you are striving to succeed to show people and oppress them, black is still black. It is wrong. Yes. Say, don't worry. <laughs> Let my enemy live long and see what I will be. I will show them. Once that is your motivation, it is wrong. Black is still black. Oh, so, so, <laughs> so, 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 Five million. When I buy my, it will be fifty million. <laughs> Once Doctor Jadi becomes the reason why you are striving so hard to get the stuff you want to get, my my sister, my brother, black is still black. It is wrong. I'm not saying you cannot advance yourself. I'm not saying you can't develop yourself. I'm not saying you can aspire to a higher calling, but you cannot make another man your yardstick. There are some of you, all you are there saying, ah, this is what we pass like they're preaching and are preaching. This is what they're preaching and are preaching. Don't give me that microphone now. When I, when I drop what, drop what, drop what, drop what. It go. Black is still black. Go find your own. This one, let me do here. I ain't going nowhere. I no go seek, I no go die, and I swear I go day not. Black is still black. Black is still black. Let's see, there's nothing like a white lie. Make her go there. Lie! A lie with a reason is still a lie. Are you still here? See, nobody said being a Christian is a walk in the park. Nobody said that when you commit to God, it's going to be smooth sailing. 
you are going to be in many dangers often. You are going to be in many trouble often. But you see, the truth is the true test of what you are made of is what do you do when those times come? Why do you think people don't like working with Christians? Why? Because Christians compromised. Christians defrauded their businesses. Christians carried their money. I had a friend who had a bank. Everybody he hired was a pastor, and I'm not joking. Everybody, either a pastor or an assistant pastor, they wrecked the bank. Can we really talk? My friends, black is still black. Until the church realizes that black is black and white is white and we begin to uphold the standards of our God, the world is not going to give us any respect or have respect for our God. Is it not interesting that you can trust a Muslim with money and you can't trust a Christian with money? Is it not interesting? That now people are advocating that we go back to the traditional gods just to ensure that people will do what they say they would do. You know, someone, someone, a friend of mine in this church, he gave me, he said, Pastor, you see, all these things that we are doing that when people are taking out of office, we are giving them Bible, it's not working. Let's bring Shokman, no? Let's bring Shango. Let's bring Ogun. Let them hold the iron. I say, we will not see public force. Say, if I take a method that strike us, say, let them. <laughs> say, you see that the fight and the struggle for public offices will diminish. Yes. <laughs> Why? Because we are not allowing black to be black and white to be white. I'm really, really concerned for the future of my faith. Because we keep giving the world ammunition to discredit us by the things that we do. This morning, I simply came to challenge you to keep the banner of righteousness flying and to understand this one thing. Grace is not only something that catches you when you fall. Grace is what stops you from falling. So that when you are stirred, when you are stirred in the face by something that is difficult, you can look at yourself and see your helplessness, but you can look to the heavens and tell that thing, I've got grace. Oh God, you can look at that house girl. It is not a short nicker that is your problem. The problem is you and your decision making. But you have grace. So you can look at her and look at that tea girl that comes into your office to serve you tea and you don't know where the milk is coming from because... You can take your tea without milk. <laughs> Why? You have grace. <laughs> I know fear. No? You see, the reason why a lot of things are swept under the carpet in the body of Christ is because we keep sugarcoating things and we keep deceiving ourselves and acting like we don't know. See, when you come here, you will not be confused about what I'm dealing with. It's a vow I made to God. I will say it exactly the way it is. Are you still here? Tap your neighbor, tell them I've got grace. Oh, you're not saying it like a preacher. I got grace. I got grace. You know why? Because tomorrow you may need to make a very tough decision. And you must be able to remind yourself, black is black, but I got grace. You may need to look at something that is very difficult to do. Look at it, everything inside you wants to do it. Tell yourself, black is black, and I got grace. I've got grace. You got grace not to take the bribe. 
You've got grace not to make that mistake. You've got grace not to make that phone call. You have grace. Are you still here, my friends? Black is still black. If it is wrong, why? The foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Stand to your feet this morning. Stand to your feet this morning. Black is black. It's not gray. Any life lived outside absolutes will end up in compromise. White is white. If it is good, it is good. If it is bad, it is bad. Lift your hands in this room this morning and ask for grace. Understanding now that black is black. Black is still black. Black is not gray. Black is not almost black. If it is wrong, it is wrong. Take a stand this morning. This call is so that you can take a stand. Say, Father, I have grace. I lean on your grace to do what is right at every point in time. I lean on your grace. I lean on your grace. I refuse to be swayed. I lean on your grace. I lean on your grace in my family. I lean on your grace. Someone needs to be talking to God right now. I lean on your grace. I'm open. God, God, God I, I lean on your grace to do what is right. To do what is right by my children. What is right by my wife, by my spouse. I, I lean on your grace to do what is right by my boss, by my organization, by my office. I, I, I lean on your grace to do what is right because I understand that black is still black. Speak to the Lord this morning. Speak to the Lord this morning. Black is still black. Black has not changed. It is still black. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Someone needs to receive grace this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All heads bowed. All heads bowed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are people here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are people here in this room. You were wronged and you really, really hurt. And right now, what you want is revenge. What you want is revenge. You want them to feel what you felt. You want the person to feel the same pain that you felt. Raise your hand. There's grace at this altar. Raise your hand. Black is still black. Oh, raise it properly. You were wronged. You were wronged and you really hurt. And right now you, you want to hit back at them. But my friends, black is still black. Uh, if you're raising your hand, meet me at this altar. There's grace here. There's grace. Just, just excuse us. Meet me at this altar. Meet me at this altar. What you are looking for is revenge. You, 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 you want them to feel what you felt. Come, come, come. Please come, please come. There's healing at this altar. Please come. I sense there are more people coming. Come, please come. Come. There's grace here. Black is black. Revenge is still wrong. Come. You said you're forgiving them, but you still want them to feel the same pain. Come. There's grace at the altar.
There's grace at the altar. Please come if you're coming. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of deliverance. Then Jesus' mind says the Lord. Those of you in front, please listen to me carefully. I am not standing here to belittle your pain. I'm not standing here to discountenance what you have gone through. It's painful. It hurts. You were broken. But revenge is wrong. Black is still black. Even revenge justified is still wrong. The word of God says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. As you are standing here, because there's grace at this altar, I want you to release to, to receive grace and release the vengeance to God. And say, God, I release this thing to you. It's painful, but I release it to you. I release it to you. I release it to you. I surrender to your will. I surrender to your way. Talk to God. Talk to God this morning. Tell him, I, I, I release this thing. I release this, 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 this hunger for revenge. I, I, I release it to you. And I receive grace to let go. I receive grace to let go. Talk to the Lord this morning. Talk to the Lord. Just, just mention the case. Mention the situation. And say, God, God, I release it to you. I know it is wrong to seek revenge. It is black is still black. Let it go. Let it go. Many of you feel used, but let it go. You feel dumped and abandoned, let it go. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Let it go. The Holy Spirit is here. He is the healer. He is the bomb in Gilead. If you're standing here, let it be your prayer. everyone here let grace pour down on them like a torrential downpour let grace 
pour down on them grace 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 i declare like paul let grace be multiplied to this your people in the name of the lord jesus christ grace father grace to let go because they understand that what is wrong is wrong and what is right is right father i ask do a quick work of deliverance in their heart in their heart you are the physician in the house on the rock you are the balm in gilead i ask my father do a quick work in this heart heal every pain soothe every scar father bring total wholeness in the name of jesus thank you our father I declare that they are free from the burden of vengeance in the name of Jesus. We release them.